Hey, Journey. I am here with my daughter, Callie Joy Agard. Last time you got to see her was September of 2023, where we were able to send her out as a missionary to Australia and to the Solomon Islands. And so she was supposed to go for six months. She stayed a little bit longer. So Callie Joy, just give us an update. What did God do in you? What did God do through you? And uh, just fill us in. Yeah, so for the past 10 months, I've been a missionary in Australia and in Solomon Islands. While I was in Australia, we were reaching out to local communities and local churches while also getting training on what it would look like to take the Bible and the love of Jesus to another nation that was Solomon Islands. And then I was able to take a Bible school, an intensive Bible school, and really study with other missionaries the Word of God through an intensive program and how it applies to missions. Now, what were some of the things that you would do in the Solomon Islands? I know it was um, it, it was is a little bit unique and it had some of its challenges. What are some of the ways that you would minister, bring the gospel to the people in the Solomon Islands? Yeah, so a lot of the ways that my team and I would bring the gospel to the Solomon Islands was through what we called an open air, which was we would go to these markets and hundreds of people would just crowd around and be hungry for the word of God. And we got to preach, pray, and really just open up invitations to salvation to these people on the streets. And it was so beautiful. We also partnered with churches there and partnered with church leaders and church elders there and really tried to help equip the people while they were there. It's awesome. I love it. Now, uh, Callie Joy, you and I are fans of the show uh, Survivor, and you compared your experience on the Solomon Islands. You called it Survivor for Jesus. And and in light of that, we're we're studying James chapter one, and this is what it says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Mm -hmm. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. Now, what were some of the challenges you had as a missionary going literally on the other side of the the globe to do missions? What were some of those conditions like? Yeah, I think each nation had its own challenges. So while I was in Australia, I think some of the challenges I faced would have been sometimes loneliness on holidays. You don't really know anybody or have strong relationship and you don't have any family out there. And I think in Solomon Islands, it had a different set of challenges, extreme heat conditions, living situations weren't comfortable. Yeah. Tell us about some of the, the challenges of being there. Cause I'm, I'm aware of them, but like, okay, what were your sleeping conditions like? Yeah. So we had to sleep in these giant nets that look like tents and they're very hot and you get in them and you have to sleep on um, a very thin sleeping mat depending on where we were in the Solomon Islands. Because malaria is real, and a couple of your friends got malaria, which yeah. is very serious. And so there's that. Then how about what you ate? You know, What was your eating conditions like? Yeah, so every day we ate the same thing. It was rice with some vegetables on top, and um, it was hard to come by meat. So I think we had meat three or four times while we were there. Wow. So not sleeping the way you want, not eating the way you want. You're completely out of your comfort zone. It's hot. <laughs> You don't know anybody on the entire island, nobody on the continent, and yet throughout the entire process, you still had joy. How did you tap into joy in the midst of being completely outside of your comfort zone? I think one of the ways that I was able to find joy was really prioritizing just my time with the Lord and fixing my eyes Mm -hmm. on Jesus and not necessarily the trials or what else was coming. But I think one thing that really I tried to preserve and practice a little bit more was gratitude Mm. and not necessarily gratitude for things that could perish, but really thank you, Jesus, that I have a relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that you placed me here. Thank you, Lord, that I'm surrounded by a beautiful nation where I can minister to your people and just really simply gratitude, um, not just in Solomon Islands, but really trying wherever I am Mm. and not based on circumstances to find that. Yeah, and I sense that gratitude every time we got to talk to you, Callie Joy, and I sense it now, and and I love that. And gratitude and joy do go mm-hmm. hand in hand. And so um, so you were planning on going there just for six months. You end up being there nine or ten, and, and now you're planning on going back in a week for two years. Yeah. And, and so how can we be praying for you as you go back to be a missionary in Australia and beyond? Yeah, so I just want to say thank you already, Journey, for how you guys have been praying for me, how you guys have supported me through your prayers. I really do feel them while I'm in Australia and while I was in the Solomon Islands. 
One way you guys can continue to pray for me and my teams is just to the people that we're ministering to, really, that we're equipping them and the Word of God sticks with them, not just while we're in their communities, but beyond that, and that it's not about necessarily us, but that it all just points back to Jesus. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Church, thank you for being a church that develops leaders for ministry and then sends them out in the name of Jesus. And so Callie Joy read Acts 1-8 years ago where uh, we were sent across the world. And so that ministered to her and she's part of a church that literally sends missionaries and ministry partners. So thank you for being a church that does just that. Grateful for you.